Hi, this is Chinmay. This video is going to be uh, in English and in Tamil. So, uh, this is a video where I clarify uh, what exactly is going on with the dubbing union and my particular membership issue, right? So, I joined in 2006. And uh, the salary for that film was taken as my membership uh, fee. So, they paid me 15,000 rupees on that particular date. And that money was directly transferred into the dubbing union and that became a membership fee basically uh, which meant that I there was no payment for the first film that I did. Uh, however, according to the bylaws it says that the membership fee is 250 rupees. But uh, this very arbitrary um, you know uh, membership fee of the dubbing union which is also compulsory if you do not become a part of the dubbing union they will tell you that they will prevent a film from releasing. Uh, which is the exact thing that they told me at that point in time and saying that I did not think that I am going to have a very very long career as a voice over dubbing artist. So I said I was not too keen and this Silin or Kadal will perhaps be the only film that I am going to be dubbing for, I am not interested, I am only a singer, uh, you know sort of a thing. But they said that if I did not become a part of the dubbing union, they would prevent the film from releasing. So basically there was no option of not being a part of the dubbing union and that is how uh, it works here. Uh, I joined in Silinur Kadal and um, thereafter um, from there on whichever film that I was a part of. I have dubbed for about 75-76 films I think uh, in Tamil, Telugu and in Hindi. So the rule is any film uh, in Tamil that I dub the union will take 10% of my income. Uh, if I also dub a film in Telugu for example, if, they, if originally the film was done in Hindi or in Tamil and then they dubbed that film in Telugu which is not like a straight um, Telugu film as they call it uh, in local parlance, uh, that film will also have a 10% uh, commission. So where does this 10% go? The explanation that was given to me was that 5% of this, uh, you know, this amount would go to the dubbing in charge or rather the, the voice you know, actors, manager who helps in casting these voices right from crowd voices to character voices to heroine and villain voices, right. 5% uh, of this income goes to the PRO and then the 5% of this goes to the union welfare fund or something like that. However, uh, how the union worked was they would take the entire amount or the entire payment of all the voice actors in a film, in a Tamil film. Uh, and that payment, let us say, you know, there are uh, some total of, you know, just to give you a number, maybe let us say there are 25 voice actors in a film, including crowd voices, uh, including um, the voices that has given uh, for characters, for villain, for the heroine, or in some cases, even if it is a hero, for example, all these voices, their combined salaries would be given as one check. Uh, to the dubbing union and the dubbing union would then cut out checks to all of us after reducing that 10 percent um, to um, all our you know bank accounts. Now uh, there would not be a receipt uh, that would say that they have deducted 10 percent there will just be a check and then after a point in time once um, I started having auditing issues because there was no you know uh, invoice that was raised by me to them and then they would not give a receipt for or a voucher for deducting the 10 percent uh, you know um, of from my income. So after a very very long time I started uh, telling them that you know uh, you know you basically do not want to be in loggerheads and you do not want to be fighting with anybody about this. So I said that I will raise invoices to uh, the films that I work on let me raise the invoice you will anyway get to know which film that I am working in. I am going to talk about it anyway, I am going to talk about it anyway, I am going to raise So I would say that I will raise the invoice and then once the money reflects in my account, I would pay the 10 percent to the dubbing union. So a lot of times the, since they would say that these uh, dubbing you know, managers uh, in charge, people may not afford it, they would ask for cash. So we would give cash and then some PROs would just come and say that they will go and uh, deposit the remaining the dubbing union. This is something that has just been going on for a very long time and this is something that we do without questioning. Um, another thing that um, happened uh, a while ago, I mean a very long time ago was that sometime in the late 2000s I think uh, they sent me a notice, a show cost notice 
saying that I had spoken ill of the dubbing union uh, based on a random rumor and I was asked to come and explain myself. So, uh, dubbing union is not a very good person. You are not a very good person. You are not a very good person. You are not a I didn't know on what basis that was. So, they named an SS music interview of which I took, uh, and it was that interview was in English. So, I remember taking the copy of that interview from SS Music and then giving a copy at the dubbing union and then furnishing a letter saying that uh, I have not spoken ill of anybody, especially that particular interview did not have me in even mentioning anything about dubbing at all at that point in time. So I said, I don't know where this is coming from and why you would send me a show cause notice and threatening to you know uh, terminate my membership based on a random rumor. However, I went to the dubbing union at that point in time, which was in Habibala Road. Uh, it was in the old uh, Nadigar Sangam building. Um, I had met the, I am not sure if he was at secretary or the tre treasurer, Mr. Selvaraj at that point in time. And he said, okay, okay, no problem, don't worry. And then that was that. Uh, they didn't even take it seriously. But the fact was they had sent me a show cause notice. So, if they had to terminate my membership, and I membership terminate my membership, they show cause notice. If show cause notice, I am not so they can't just randomly take a decision at least according to their rules that they want to you know if they you know terminate uh, membership now the dubbing union is registered as a trade union body and it's supposed to follow rules of a trade union and stuff like that there was a point in time um, during the sri lankan tamil genocide and the war crimes that were happening on the sri lankan tamils unfairly uh, that the tamil industry decided to register its voice of protest uh, in several events, several uh, protest marches and protest meetings, um, you know, which I have also been very uh, honest to my soul, I have always been wanted to be a part of it. And um, uh, the thing about that was that I think in a particular calendar year, there would be anything between four and six such protest meetings that would uh, be organized. And uh, what would happen is that, um, if as a professional you had a different professional commitment, you would be expected to cancel that and attend the protest meeting. Now, considering that a lot of us would have been a part of these protest meetings, uh, you know, uh, I have sung in so many of those events, um, helped a lot of these people, uh, you know, raise funds for causes. Uh, there was this one particular time that uh, the meeting date coincided with a different professional commitment, a concert of sorts that I had in Kerala. That was a classical music concert or a ghazal concert, I don't remember well now. And I remember requesting Mr. Radha Ravi to exempt me on that particular day because I had attended every other meeting, every other protest meeting I had been a part of. And there would always be a registry that would be maintained by the dubbing union uh, to make sure that all artists attended that. So whichever artist did not attend those meetings either due to pro professional or personal commitments, would be uh, terminated, they would be uh, suspended and then they would have to you know come and apologize and give reasons as to why they did not uh, turn up. Uh, so I remember ha having a call with Mr. Radharavi saying that I definitely wanted to, I had to go because I had taken an advance and I was expected to go and fulfill my professional commitment and I, I remember Mr. Radharavi telling me that if I did not land up at the protest meeting, he would terminate my membership and uh, he would give me a red card and that he was also a busy artist and he was also acting and he was cancelling his shoot and coming to the protest meeting and it was my business to uh, land up at as well. So that day I had to cancel my concert and I went to the meeting, I signed on the register and I came back silently. Now it was perhaps during that time uh, that uh, you know around that time I think uh, a very very popular female actor in uh, the south was also handed out a red card because she acted in a Hindi film which was shot in Sri Lanka. Thereafter I think she did not really, I do not know if she acted in Tamil films after that but she was given, uh, there was disciplinary action taken for a decision that she really did not have a part on. Uh, but that was that, that was uh, how some you know decisions were taken and then there was another time that um, there was a general body meeting at the dubbing union. They claimed to have sent me a letter which never reached me. Because if a show cause notice could reach me, I don't know why this letter could not reach me because I was more or less on the same address. Um, and then I had to go explain myself, 
uh, apologize for not having come to the general body meeting and that was perhaps my first um, you know meeting <laughs> at the dubbing union office uh, where I was there was a lot of uh, abuse there was a lot of uh, I mean verbal abuse there was a lot of yelling and shouting and I realized how um, how he could yell when somebody didn't turn up at the general body meeting. So I was not the only one at that meeting, there were other artists as well and everybody got yelled at equally, it was not as if uh, somebody was given a special treatment and I remember being so shaken that I had, I was crying, my mother was also pre present that day and um, I told him that the letter never reached me, I am sorry and he said that's okay, make sure that you are there at the next general body meeting. Now, coming to the termination of sorts. Um, what happens is, what seems to have happened at the general body meeting the past week was that there was a meeting and uh, the council members or the other office bearers or council members decided that they would terminate me and the decision to veto that termination rests with the president which is Mr. Radha Ravi. Um, I Especially when something like this happens, they are also supposed to send me a show cause notice. I was not in the country, I have not, uh, had not received any such letter, neither did they intimate me that something like this happened. In 2016 February, basically by January 15th or January 30th, you are supposed to pay your subscription fee, which is about 180 rupees or something like that, right. Um, and I have been paying all that and I have also been uh, paying about 10% of my income for since 2006. So I am sure their income from me alone would run to several lakhs. So I do not know why they would uh, terminate my membership for not paying 180 rupees, right. Now coming back in 2006, February 11th, I have a bank transfer that has gone out to the dubbing union for the payment of a lifetime membership fee. Now the lifetime membership fee is uh, pegged at 2500 rupees in the bylaw book uh, which is in Tamil but they asked me to pay 5000 rupees and I paid 5000 rupees and I have the account of that uh, from my bank account which is on the 11th of February which has gone to the dubbing unions bank account. So I of course I, they have not given me a receipt for it and one week later they have also released a payment uh, for a film that I had uh, dubbed for after reducing 10%. Um, thereafter I was given information from the union to not uh, make any payments or uh, give any payments because there, there was a court case and I did not ask what the court case was and what the issue was. They said because we do not have a you know building, we do not have a union office or something like that. I do not remember the exact details, I said okay whenever you want me to uh, pay or whenever you want me to come and sign, I will come and sign. So now as long as I was concerned they would you know the somebody from the office would always call me and tell me how much I am supposed to pay for each film and to whose and in whose name uh, the check is supposed to be drawn and I have always followed these rules and if they ask me to pay in cash and I have also paid in cash and none of these times I would have ever, uh, I was ever given receipts. I still hold the dubbing uh, membership uh, card, my uh, membership number is 1733 and um, so far I have attended only one general body meeting in Kamara Jarangam and uh, that was for a couple of hours I attended that and then I left uh, that day post lunch. Now so they are telling me that my membership automatically expired because I did not pay the subscription fee is false uh, because I have paid the lifetime membership fee. The next thing is that 97 people as of 2016 January have not paid their subscription fee and their memberships were supposed to be automatically terminated. Now in this general body meeting that happened the past week they have not said anything about the other 96 people because I'm, my name is also on the list of non-payees um, and how did I get this list because in March uh, this year was when uh, there was the dubbing union uh, elections and this entire list of 97 people who did not pay the subscription fee and hence they cannot vote in the elections was shared. Uh, with all other members and I guess that is only that was the reason why I also did not get to vote in the elections I presume though that is also wrong because I have paid the uh, lifetime membership fee. 
um, and to state on record I don't have the receipt because uh, the dubbing union office bearer at that point in time uh, whoever was uh, calling me said they will send the receipt through somebody via PRO at a later date and I was it is it was that's how they have always been saying and I would never follow up I mean it was anyway going from my bank and I didn't think this would be an issue uh, or anything that I should be worried about so I let it go and now considering that 96 people you know have uh, definitely not paid the subscription fee i am one of the uh, in the list of 97 one of those i'm technically i shouldn't be you know debarred from the union at all so nobody knows what happens to those uh, 96 dubbing artists who have not paid the subscription fee of 180 rupees or whatever and uh, no accounts apparently are also properly maintained um, and there is a lot of questions there are a lot of queries on what exactly is happening with the 10% of income that is being deducted from all our uh, salaries. In 2016, there seems to have been a case by Bhuma Subarao who filed a case against the dubbing union asking why they are taking this money. And they have taken about a lakh and 10,000 as membership fee from her, but they gave her receipts for a lesser amount or something like that. So she has also filed a case and it seems like this because of her case that there was a temporary, uh, you know, you know, suspension, or they had stopped it, stopped uh, taking 10% from the income of a lot of dubbing artists. So, uh, as of now, there are a total of 16 cases against the dubbing union, which are all on record. Um, I have the list of that. I also have it in record about the amount of money that I have paid to the dubbing union as dubbing union fee. And uh, I also have it on record of all the amount of money that uh, the dubbing union has reduced and uh, uh, you know and paid me as a balance in all these years because I have been a tax paying citizen and it is all uh, reflected in my books of accounts. Um, so I can pretty much I guess come to the conclusion that this uh, the dubbing union terminating me is not on the basis of my not paying a subscription fee because that's false and it is only because uh, there must have been some sort of a pressure and that also that I shared a lot of these stories of um, you know, sexual harassment uh, accounts against Mr. Hadaravi. Uh, so that's where it stands. Um, let's see how this goes and how uh, this is going to be worked on because how the industry works is that other unions and other councils that work inside the Tamil industry cannot have a say and cannot interfere in the functionings of another union. However, there is um, uh, there is a sort of a dichotomy there because the dubbing union can now say that you are not supposed to work with a particular artist that they have terminated. They can send out letters, they can ask directors to apologize for working with uh, dubbing union, uh, dubbing artists that they have terminated. So there are a lot of issues like that. So if uh, you know one of the basic questions that people should have asked the dubbing union is that if I am not a member of the dubbing union since 2016, I have actually done a few films after that from the date that they have said that they have terminated me as a member uh, according to their own rules they have not they are supposed to have not let me work they have allowed me to work which means that they had acknowledged that i had uh, paid the membership lifetime membership fee so now just after the me too movement i guess they suddenly decided that okay we have to say something up against her so uh, it's going to be she did not pay the subscription fee so they they have come up with a very arbit very false uh, account of uh, what's happened and this is clearly a way of trying to punish me for having come out with these stories and I'm pretty sure of that as of today. So that's where it stands, this clarity was required and um, that's that, I'll see you later, bye-bye.